Let's do a quick example on applying rigid body elements on a hollow cylinder. I'm going to quickly set up some geometry, curve, circle, let's do radius, uh, let's see, locate, zero, 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 sure, and on edge, uh, let's see, 0 0.5, okay, there it is. Cancel geometry. Uh, da, 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 da. Where, da, da. where can we? I want to extrude it. So let's go to solid. No, surface, surface, extrude. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Surface and extrude. I'm going to extrude this guy. Okay. Select vector to extrude along. I drew this on the xy plane, so I'm going to extrude it along the z. So 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, and I'm going to give it a 1 right here in the Z. There you have it. Good. Okay, we have our hollow cylinder. So now we're going to set up rigid body load here on this edge. Imagine this would be some hole in a plate, and it uh, would have a bolt in it, right? And this, lo this bolt is loaded, and as it would pull or push through this hole, it would transfer its load uh, around the edges of the hole evenly. So that's what we're trying to mimic. We're going to set up a master node right here at the center and distribute its load all along the edges of this circle. That's what we're going to uh, set up. Okay, so let's set up some kind of material doesn't really matter what material, if anything works for an example, 60E9, uh, 0.33, just fine, okay. This is a shell, a plate type of setup, so we're gonna do property, we're gonna select plate elements, right here, plate, uh, thickness 0.1, okay. Cancel. Let's mesh. I'm gonna seed it first. Mesh size on surface. Uh, select all. Okay. Just whatever the default suggestion is. Okay. I uh, can uh, go ahead. Mesh geometry surface. There you go. Plate elements with quads. Okay. And there you have it. And now we can go ahead and set up the rigid body. Uh, element. Until now we couldn't really set it up because if we wanted to come here, property with this one, type, we pick rigid. Okay, so when this window opens, we would have to tell where are we setting up the master, the independent node, and where are we setting up the dependent or slave nodes. Okay, and if you would click on this, if you did not mesh it, they, you wouldn't have any nodes, right? So it would just tell you that uh, it is not set up and you, need, you should go and do that. So we meshed it, we have our nodes, so we can come here and pick the nodes that we want to involve in this operation. So we, if we look, I want to set up my uh, master node right here at the center, but I do not have a node there. So I can pick this option new node at center and for that I'm gonna come here to the dependent nodes click on nodes and method on curve so it's gonna pick all the nodes on the curve that I'm picking there you go highlight it so you can make sure okay and now it uh, found all the dependent nodes or the slave nodes and it's gonna figure this out on its own at the center of all of these. Okay, so I'm using an RB2 and okay, and there you have it. It's set up our rigid body elements. If you want, you can uh, uh, come to model elements by type, rigid, edit, and change the colors. So even, and see, when I opened it back up, it filled this out element uh, node number 71 it 
created it automatically and put it right there. That's what we have. Let me put Control Q, uh, labels all off and mesh. Go to nodes, done, and there you have it. Seventy one. Right? We didn't have a node there. He created it based on our request. Good. And now we can apply some kind of a um, loading to this, right? Let's uh, do a load geometry constraint on curve. I'm gonna boundary condition, okay, and I'm gonna fix these two, okay, and leave it fixed, okay, cancel, and on our rigid body, let's put some kind of load on a node, and we're gonna apply it to our master, this one, right, and in because we did this rigid body, body element distribution, we're not going to have a point load. It's going to take whatever we apply to this point and kind of distribute it or smear it all along the edge. Okay, uh, what direction Z? We want a DZ, so I don't know, 1000, whatever, call it uh, F1. Okay. And I believe that's it, right? There's our load, there's constraint. We are ready to do a quick analysis. Analysis, it's a static analysis, so leave it static. Okay, analyze. One complete. Let's see the deformation. There you have it. And as you can tell, along the edges of this circle, all the nodes are being pulled at the same rate, right? We do not have, it doesn't send more force to one side or the other. They are, it's being distributed evenly. Since uh, we were here, let's go back a um, sec. See, here we are saying that all these, the dependent nodes, are copying the behavior of the independent one. And here we define which moves we want these to copy from this one. We said everything, whatever this guy's doing, copy everything and m mirror it, right? That's what this means. All right, there you go. And let's see if we want to visualize something, select five, a deform, con tour deform down here uh, let's do plate bottom major principle stress okay okay and there you have it we can hide the geometry so we can see we can kind of tell that <laughs> we are pulling it and kind of thinning out at the center nice to see let's do this little animation there you go alrighty quick video like and subscribe and tune in for the next one. Have a good one.